Good evening and welcome to the Thorough Newspaper Analysis for the 31st of January 2023. So today we have one editorial to discuss upon that is the four things to look out for in the union budget to be presented this week. Following that, we will have the news update and the legal news for the next two segments. Now, in the budget that we know is going to come up in the next week, that is not the only crucial news to the financial world. Because it is not just about the Indian budget, but the US Federal Reserve will also release their policy decisions, which is likely to have an impact on the Indian economy. Now, while we wait for the Indian budget to come out, there are four things that we, as the citizens of this country, will be eagerly looking forward to. Number one, the budget numbers. Secondly, the revenue deficit matters. Thirdly, realistic revenue targets. And fourthly, and lastly, expenditure priorities. Now, what are budget numbers? So if we go forward with a very basic explanation, it's the kind of growth that we expect in the GDP. So if a country were to say that they would, uh, let's say, have a growth of 5% in the GDP, when they had a 1% inflation, the effective growth of their GDP would be 5 minus 1, 4%. So this is what this is where the Indian government comes in. That is that the while presenting the budget, they go forward and they give us a number at which they expect the GDP to grow. So budget numbers are crucial in depicting the economic health of the country. The 2019-20 budget saw the government aim for an effective of 8% increase in GDP. In this 2019-20 financial year, the inflation was 4% and the Indian government stated that our GDP would grow by 12%. So the net effective gain in GDP would be 8%. However, it was soon established that the financial year of 2019-20 was a very slow year and the effective growth in GDP boiled down to a 3.7%. So it was a massive letdown from the 8% that was originally promised or expected by the Indian government. Secondly, we have a revenue deficit to look into while talking about the Indian budget. Now, when we talk of revenue deficit, the first thing that comes to our minds is the fiscal deficit or the amount of money that a government borrows from the market. Now, this plays a significant role because if the amount of money that is borrowed from the market by a government goes beyond a certain level, there's a high chance that the country economy will sink. There are also legislations in place when India is concerned, which seeks to go forward and create a block after which the country cannot go forward and create more fiscal deficit. An improper fiscal deficit, like how important it is or how an, an improper fiscal deficit could affect a country was clear when Liz Truss lost her job as the Prime Minister of UK due to her policies. In India's case, however, it is also important to note that there has to be a balance struck in the revenue deficit. That is the amount that India is spending daily versus the amount that the government is earning daily. Thirdly, we really need to have realistic revenue targets. Now, ideally, India ought to find the balance between lower indirect tax and a progressively higher direct tax. Now, why is this? When we are talking of a lower indirect tax, which we can also refer to as GST. Now, we all know India is walking into a recession, most probably because the entire global economy has slowed down and the RBI has time and again flagged that there might be a black swan event in the near future. So in the event that India does find itself at the doorsteps of a recession, even if not a full-fledged re recession, reducing the indirect tax on goods would surely mean that the prices of these goods would fall, which would in turn increase the demand and that in itself would create some jobs. Now, a progressively higher direct tax, while yes, the servicemen are looking for a reduced income tax, we could be looking forward at greater slabs of corporate taxes, which also come under the head of direct tax. And finally, we have expenditure priorities. Now, India is the fifth 
largest global economy in the world india has claimed time and again that it wants to be a superpower in its own right however india must remember that no country till date has become a superpower without investing significantly in their health and education so if india wants to achieve that global status where it is a superpower and it has a certain significant voice in the global biome it needs to invest significantly in health and education so that the entire population of india grows and we basically become a better country both economically and in a holistic manner now with this we move on to the news updates for today firstly we have the crpf punjab regiment win award for the republic day parade the punjab regiment has been adjudged the best marching contingent among the three services at the republic day parade central reserve force police uh, central reserve police force or the crpf was declared the best among central armed police forces and other auxiliary forces secondly we have china's sokun or sochun to scrap the three child limit now restrictions on single parents shall be removed as the world's most populous nation faces a looming demographic crisis so as we all know china did have this one family one child policy and it had it for a very long time but they recently realized that they were having a demographic crisis as their entire working age group was advancing they did not have enough number of young like the enough a uh, quantity of young generation within their populace so they removed that one family one child rule and allowed parents to have three children however even after this move they realized that the looming demographic crisis did not abate and hence they are planning to scrap the idea altogether thirdly we have the hockey coach resigns after world cup graham reed resigned on monday taking responsibility for the host's world cup failure india who won bronze at the 2021 tokyo olympics to end a 41 year old wait finished joint ninth in the tournament staged in odessa Fourthly, we have South Africa to host the fifteenth BRICS summit. The fifteenth BRICS summit is all set to take place in South Africa's Durban. The foreign ministers of Brazil, Russia, India, and China met for the first time on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in two thousand and six, kicking off BRIC cooperation. Fifthly, we have Peter Pavel becomes the new president of Czech Republic. Now, Peter Pavel is very famous. as a former chairman of the north atlantic treaty organization or nato military committee he has been a vocal supporter of the european union and nato seeing the czech republic's future as inextricably linked to their membership sixthly we have england's ben stokes and nat skyver win icc annual awards all round stokes has been named the men's test cricketer of the year while skyver won the rachel hawey flint trophy for icc women's cricketer of the year Seventhly, we have Madhya Pradesh CM launches Ladli Bahina scheme, new scheme to provide rupees one thousand per month to women from financially poor background in the state. A sum of rupees sixty thousand crore will be spent on this scheme in five years. Eighthly, we have Odisha Minister Nabak Ishwar dies. Health and Family Welfare Minister of Odisha Nabak Ishwar Das died hours after being shot by a policeman. Ninthly, Asia's second and country's first cable suspension bridge, Bajrang Setu, is being constructed at Rishikesh. This bridge is coming up next to the ninety-year-old famous Lakshman Jhula. Lakshman Jhula is closed since last year when it was found that it was no longer safe for pedestrians. With this, we move on to the news updates for today. So. The Supreme Court in the case of Usha Chakraborty and another versus the state of West Bengal and another. held that criminal proceedings can be quashed in exercise of powers under section 482 of crpc when it is found that the attempt was to give a cloak of criminal offence to a dispute which is essentially of civil nature secondly the supreme court again held that upon asking for in in this particular case upon asking for medi- mediation the supreme court held that the marriage was based the institution of marriage was based on mutual love and conditions 
and sorting terms and conditions into one was not necessary so what had happened is basically there was this couple that had been wanting uh, to go forward with the divorce however when in front of the court they decided that they wanted to give their marriage another shot so the counsel for the wife uh, went up to the court and asked that certain terms and conditions be implemented into the marriage to which the supreme court said that the marriage is be the institution of matrimony is based on mutual love and affection and terms and conditions could not do justice to this institution so this was all for today for free study materials and tna pdf slides please join our telegram channel the link of which you can find in the description or you can scan the barcode that is given on your screen for any further information please feel free to visit www.lawseeker.com thank you